welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Bobby Srivastav. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we're joined by Bobby Srivastav, the co-founder and COO at Benakiva. And normally, this is where our podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Bobby, hello and welcome. Thank you for having me on this show, Shannon. I'm excited to be talking about all things data and talk about my career. I'm excited. Me too. Uh, thank you so much for this. Uh, and Bobby, so let's get into it. So you're a co-founder and COO at Benakiva. So tell me, what type of business is Benakiva? So Benakiva is a insure tech company. Our goal is to transform claims for life, annuity, disability, long-term care. We're also exploring other lines and we work with carriers. So all things claims in those lines is our jam right now. Nice. I love it. And as the COO, what do you do? So I manage our operations. So how are we going to uh, ensure proper product development and product innovation in our company? All of the amazing deliveries our company has been faced with because of our growth, which is great. But how are we going to implement and deliver a wow to our customers, the security side of the house? Uh, as well as how are we going to support our customers after they uh, leave the delivery process and they we have to now take care of them. So those are my uh, four areas of, uh, of um, areas that I manage. Uh, I love it. And, and tell me, Bobby, how do you work with data in your current role? We, you know, we, from a data perspective, it's everywhere from a claims perspective. So you know, when you think about from a claims value chain perspective, how does the data come in? And then how do we pay out that claim? So data going out technically. And then when the data goes out, what can we do with it more? Mm -hmm. So when we work with our carriers, we want to make sure that because data from a carrier perspective, they're, they're in a high, most of them are in a hybrid mode or they're fully legacy. And when I say hybrid, they're in partial legacy, partial modern tech. So data becomes, how are we gonna leverage that gold becomes such a critical factor when we start doing the implementation side of the house. So we oftentimes work with carriers on strategies of how can we be smart about looking at that data uh, and how can we leverage it in a way that doesn't cost them so much money on their existing IT? Can, you know, we built a lot of tools around Benikiva to really help support that legacy process, but also as they transform their enterprise IT and that data structure, we can be part, we can make that change quickly. The other part that we work with data is, is how do we make, uh, smart insights out of the data and claims. So, uh, so when carriers are, uh, are asking us, what kind of data can you provide us? We're like, this is your data. However, we can give it to you in a way that makes sense because, you know, there's an, there's a saying that from our industry perspective, I think, but that's globally, we're drowning in data, thirsty for insights. How can we make, how can we enable and really quench that thirst by providing them data in a way that 
they can take action and and it could really make a difference. And then uh, my yeah. favorite scenario, Shannon, that that I get excited about, along with my other team, uh, my other founding members get excited about is from a claim perspective, everybody looks at it as, well, you're the end of the value chain. What, you know, the claim's gonna get paid out. However, we're collecting beneficiary data. Can we, in the claim sides, in, in it has to be certain products, right? Where it makes sense. Could we start to enable the organization, the carriers to really leverage data in a way that they can build relationships can you understand that the Benny can be offer them like products and services to help them? That's what the carrier is supposed to do, right? Like you're in the yep. business to fulfill a promise. And that's in our world is the fulfill a promise of claim. So can we, can you repeat that cycle? I call it the circle of life. Can we enable that circle of life effect for, for these carriers? Oh, I love that. You know, and I, and I love that you're talking about it's, not just about the data, but it's making sense of it and providing a, a way to for people to understand it and have insights. And that's such a common problem, right, across any industry, right? Yeah. It, it's 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 the it, it's the problem and, and and the solution needed, I think, everywhere. But okay, so and I'm fascinated to hear how you founded this business and why why you got into and in founding some at this particular business, but so let's back it up a bit. Um, let's start from the beginning. So when you were very, very young, say six years old, you know, was this the dream? Did you grow up and say, I'm going to be a co-founder of an Akiva that is going to about acclaims and, uh, or, or what was the dream? The dream. Okay. So, um, my heritage is Indian. I grew up in the States, but my parents are Indian. So of course, like the stereotype, and I did have stereotypical parents, doctor, you're going to be a lawyer, go into finance. So my heritage is actually business. So my family, I remember my uncle giving me like a newspaper clipping back in the day to say, Bobby, finance is looking like a hot field. You should get a degree in finance. Um, and then maybe you could like own a business like I do. Cause you know, my culture is Cindy's and Cindy's are just notorious. Uh, it's a stereotype again, but we're, my family is a, uh, is entrepreneurs. They're all entrepreneurs. So when, uh, so that, so it was either a doctor getting to be in, in law or finance, right? So in high school, the areas that piqued my interest were marketing and computers. And I knew that the path of being a doctor and all that stuff was just, you know, six-year-old talk. And I really dove into, and I even said, when I was in 10th grade, I said, I'm going to do something in marketing and in computers. And when I went to college, I did exactly that. I was one of those kids. I was like, okay, I loved both of those areas because I felt like I could be creative and, mm -hmm. and then also, and, and actually solve problems and puzzles. To me, information technology allowed us to solve problems that were business related by applying technology. So that's how I, that was my early part of my journey. And, and honestly, like I had uh, my, my family, unfortunately, were not very happy. The entrepreneurs of them there, because they were like, you're going to go to corporate, you're not being an entrepreneur. And I'm like, one day I may join in and <laughs> fast forward to 2015. Uh, 2015 is very significant because I had, I was still in corporate. I had worked, I had went from Pepsi. I had went to, from Pepsi to a division of AIG to the Center for Creative Leadership. Those are three organizations that had a really big mark in my career and framing it. I felt like Pepsi taught me the ability to solve problems and leveraging technology and te leveraging data. And yeah. it's all about being smart. AIG taught me about like big organization. How do you prioritize? How do you really get stuff done in more in an agile way? Because that's the genesis of when we created the agile methodology. And I was part, I was spearheading that yeah. initiative there uh, from a mortgage insurance division perspective. And then CCL, 
they're, they are really very entrepreneurial mindset. So that in itself, like when, uh, when, when I was pregnant and when I had a baby faced a lot of these problems really sparked to say, okay, I can, I've got the tools in my toolbox and I really want to build something. And I really want to solve these problems because it doesn't make sense, right? It yeah. doesn't make sense that I'm as a, I'm as a technologist, as an innovator at the center for creative leadership, doing really cool things. And I'm faced with document and I'm faced with PDFs and I have to take my daughter to Kinko's to do a disability form. And that was the genesis of my first company, Docsmore, with my other co-founder, aka my husband, who also <laughs> had similar problems and who got the itch also. What's interesting about uh, the pivot that we took for Ben and Kiva is there's three of us and three of us have our own experiences and our own whys that got us excited about the pain point that we're solving in the claims organizations now. Oh, I love that. So, well, let's back up a, a little bit. So you mentioned, I mean, you, you went into the corporate world after college. So you went in with, with a focus on computer science or computers and marketing. Yeah. So, so then what, so what was the first company? Was it Pepsi that you came out of? Aon. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So then, so what, uh, so tell me why that company and, and what specifically were you doing for that? And what was your job title? So I was in technology and doing data mapping. Uh, oh. <laughs> the data part will always yeah. be part of who I am because it's, it was, uh, it was a entry level role, but it was in yeah. IT and it was about, Hey, we've got these employee benefits. Now we've got to map their data. They're giving you data from, these file formats how do we map it to to make sense of it when when employees are yeah. doing you know their annual enrollment perspective nice. and then at pepsi i was our dba for a while like i went mm -hmm. in from business uh, i was a business analyst moved into being a dba oh and interesting moved into yeah. doing like enterprise level projects oh so that's fascinating so you were on both sides of the business or both sides like business and it yeah. So yeah. I've, uh, I've always been like a, um, uh, like a developer, but I had more, uh, the best career advice that my mentor gave me when I was at Pepsi, he was, because I was really, I'm, I like getting my hands dirty and I wanted, to, like, I really wanted to upskill and continue the passion about developing solutions and actually doing it right. Like being a mm -hmm. developer and, and looking at data structures and, and making sense of it. And when there was a fork in the road and it was, I was getting certifications and then I was thinking, okay, how deep do I go? Because if I go deep, I may have to leave Pepsi because Pepsi I've already, you know, I'm managing a team of like other DBAs, but mm -hmm. where do I go? Like I needed, mm -hmm. I needed to be among more IT people versus a quasi business team that had an IT shop. Right. Gotcha. So, yeah. so, you know, he, he made a great point. He's like the, the closest you are to the customer is where you will get the most opportunities. There's nothing wrong with you to be backstream, but the more you are facing the customer, the mm. more opportunities they present to yourself. And I think that I just carried it forward and I said, well, maybe I'll do leadership. That's when I started to like doing do more project stuff and get like a, then a team to assemble to start to do more project management within our within our teams. So that was the genesis of saying, okay, maybe I don't need to get too much of my hands dirty. Even now I like to <laughs> do a little bit, but you know, yeah. I think, I think it's fun. Right. But yeah. I have now, a, uh, I've got an amazing team that could do it. Um, but it's, it's, um, but that's, that was, that was the advice that got me to think, okay, I, I don't have to be hard, hardcore tech all the time. Yeah. Well, I see, I hear a couple of things in there too. So you mentioned that you were getting so so in in what? So it what were you getting certifications in? Oh, SQL Server, doing more DBA work. 
Nice. Well, that's, I love it. No, I, I love that you, so I hear, so, and this is what, you know, I try to find the commonality among data people, right? Is that curiosity and that compassion to learn more and keep learning. And I hear a, that a passion in you for problem solving, like you just keep finding these problems and what, like, how do I fix it? <laughs> how do I make it better? <laughs> it's, um, I have a hashtag that I say solving real problems to me. Uh, like if you, if you really look at data and, and combine that with a good, like, how can we look at a good business problem? Yeah. How do we solve it? Right. Like it's mm. all about presenting and leveraging data in a smart way that could do so much good for the organization. Gotcha. So then you moved from Pepsi. And, and I went to a division of AIG in United yeah. Guarantee. Yeah. And you, so, and did you make that move to continue to grow? I mean, because you talked to initially about that. Yeah. It was more like after when I was at Pepsi, I, I, I had, I did a lot of certifications on the SQL Server side, but I also got my master's in project management. And that's mm -hmm. what fueled my desire to say, now I can like really be skilled, like let me get that, like the technical chops I have, now let me get the project management chops. Uh, and and what was interesting is instead of, uh, instead of Pepsi paying for a certification, <laughs> they couldn't. They said, you can get a degree and we have a different budget. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, you paid for my master's versus like a, a course, right? Which is master's to me is like much more valuable. Um, right. And then I also, it, it was, a, I, I had always wanted to get my MBA. So I ended, I have two masters. So I have my MBA. Wow. And yeah. once you get your MBA, you want to do, you've got the edge to say, now I can go elevate and go work at a different organization, A, to see what other problems we can solve. And, you know, just get a different company on your resume. So yeah, yeah. that's what got me to like the, you know, I, as much as I love Pepsi, I grew up there. I, I wanted to like take it and grow and blossom to another organization. Uh, like uh, like a, a, a AIG back then had a division called United Guarantee, which has been now no longer in existence. They often, they, it's, they sold it to our capital I believe so that that was the division that really got me into core IT and, mm -hmm. and seeing IT from a more of a team lead like a leadership perspective. Fascinating. I love that and I love that you weren't that uh afraid to just go chase change and and pursue growth. Um I think you have to, right? Like in mm -hmm. this especially in this economy now like when I talk to other young folks you, you know, like if you are, if you wake up every day, and get excited about solving real problems. Awesome. But if there's like a ting tingling, like to say, could I be doing something else? You don't want to regret those moments, right? Yeah. Because there's opportunity everywhere. If you're, you've got to have that, you got to get rid of that fear, but there is, there's a lot of opportunity uh, in, in lots of different spaces. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's so easy to get comfortable and just to sit and rest. And but it's so nice to, you know, to challenge yourself and force yourself to to grow. Um, so okay, so you're AIG, so and now as then as you you have a family, yes. you're developing a family, and now this is where you've decided to, okay, I've seen this problem that and I'm going to go fix it in your first company you mentioned yeah the you so found between yeah. AIG and my first company I worked uh -huh. at the Center for Creative Leadership oh yes and that was like a call that that came out of so out of the blue Shannon because mm -hmm. I was good with the Center for Creative I mean I was good with you know working at a, a United Guarantee and this opportunity came at the Center for Creative Leadership and in our area, CCL is like the one of the top five exec educations. It's where I knew some of the faculty members. When I was at Wake, I got exposed to them. And I'd already capped in my brain. When I retire, I'm going to go teach at CCL. So when this opportunity came, I'm like, you're like 
30 years too early because <laughs> I don't want to go work for you. You're my, you're my pipe dream, you know, like you're my like right. dream dream. And they're like, no, we have a technology uh, team that's growing and expanding. We could use your skill set. And who could say no to a company like CCL? So of course I said yes, but that is where I felt like CCL had the right for me cultural mindset. For mm -hmm. it's a entre for entrepreneurs because it's a bunch of innovators. We want to do cool things. We want to look at things right. like you know my team was paperless classroom. How can you take this analog process of papers and make it into an experience for where the consumer who's coming to a program can take away like digital assets versus. It was just such a cool job. It was like a cool role. And I got into product management because of that. And it just, it was that, it, that solving new problems and being yeah. creative, thinking big, that got me to, <laughs> to docs more, to be honest with you, is, is when I had a baby, I was like, why am I doing this? Because I've solved for it in the CCL landscape, right? My husband solved yeah. for it and he's facing this. So it was very cool that, how you know we started docs more and, and the genesis was this little one who's now nine uh, yeah. really put that fuel to the fire more and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education but still have questions about its value purpose and how to get the ball rolling introducing the newest monthly webinar series from dataversity elevating enterprise data literacy where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net oh gosh i love that so much i love that you get your dream job early and it just surrounds you with that entrepreneurial passion that you were born with and that was nurtured from the time you were very young and the very, very cool. So, so then what did you do from there? So, you, so that's your first company. So, <laughs> yes. oh, oh, so, uh, so we, so the second, like Benny Kiva, mm -hmm. so the, what happened with Benny Kiva was so interesting. So there's Benny Kiva has three of us, like three founders. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, so we have docs more. So when and I have docs more and we're in Iowa because my husband's from Iowa I went to school in Iowa and his family came in, take our daughter and we're going there for two weeks. And I'm like, guess what, honey, <laughs> you have your parents. They could take care of the baby. We're doing business development. <laughs> we're in Iowa for dogs more. So we did this, like, this is where the marketer in me comes in. So I was talking to a friend and he's like, you could do cold emails, but do it this way. So here I am like a tech person, most of my career. Yeah emailing like random business people to come talk to us and to out of the 10 emails that I sent two of them said yes that's amazing and, and one of them was like a nonprofit, and the other one was a mayor who worked full-time mm -hmm. but was a client of now like you know uh, you know like uh, of my now business partner right so and she was like you know she made an introduction to Sovan and I mm -hmm to Brent to say, Hey, you know, like you should talk to them. They're in tech and he's got some venture in tech. So when we had, uh, when we were having lunch and he said, yes. So when we had lunch, he was, he's a financial advisor. Oh, uh -huh. So he was thinking, Oh, you're at, you know, you've got a nice career. So has got a nice career. You're, you're asking me to be an advisor. And we were like, Oh, what are you doing in tech? Like, and then when we started talking, he started talking about the insurance mm. use case. So his use case was around like how, you know, when from an advisor point of view, whenever he goes and, uh, sell, you know, when, when family contacts him at the time of claim, it's the same claim process mm -hmm. for various insurance uh, organizations. And, and his biggest frustration was the family, because the claims process is so bad, would tell him, can you like, just take me out, right? Like, I don't want to do business here. Take me to a different company. And he knew there was nothing wrong with the products and services, it's the process, it's yeah. the claims. Yeah. We're not yeah. leveraging data in the right way. And and when we heard it, I was like, 
disability claim here, right? And that's why we, you know, like one, one of the use cases of forms, right? Like we wanted to solve the forms issues. And that's how we all three came together to say, okay, let's put like, I actually, as the, the uh, founder and CEO of Docsmore, right? Along with my husband, we put that on side. Yeah. And and joined forces with with Brent. So the three of us were like, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna solve this problem, and it felt so good, right? Because we we came at it from our own experience. So he came at it as, I see this opportunity because my customers are facing it. We saw it as an opportunity of, man, we are doing something in documents, but this is a whole different process, right? Sure. That we can innovate and feels good because I went through like a very bad situation and then from my husband's perspective someone's perspective he's got his own lens as to why he got excited so so the three of us is that was the pivot into into not a pivot I would say like a new venture into Manikiva in 2016 and July of 2016 was super awesome because not only did uh everything ties back to my daughter, like in my initial entrepreneurship days, because yeah. July, we were struggling with her walking because she was lazy and she just wanted to crawl. <laughs> <laughs> and she started to walk because she was among, among her cousins. So I was like, Sana got to walk. We, we found Brent and we started a new venture, you yeah. know, all in two weeks time. Frame. Wow, that is exciting. That is very momentous. Wow, congratulations. All because, and, and, and you started this new company because you said yes to a meetup. Yeah, and it was, it was funny. It was the probability. Yeah. 10 emails out of the two and she was gracious to make an introduction he said yes everything happens for a reason right yeah. so the way of the universe bringing people together in a very unique way oh I just I love that story so much uh, so Bobby tell me you know um you, you've mentioned some a, a lesson already some advice that you got but what has been your biggest lesson so far in your career my biggest lesson is don't like don't allow fear to to get in the way i mean if you think about the entrepreneurship journey i'm talking about all the highs but you know like how we got to benikiva was i had a full time job i had a side hustle and i had now a new venture and we you know like to you know there are ways that you've got to make good calculated risks right to to make that leap but don't allow fear you know because we were we were we had to strip away the fear and it takes it takes I had to go through a, a pretty big mindset shift yeah. uh, to really make that happen the other piece is what you start with like my why was my daughter my why has been my daughter but now I would say it shifted because as she's grown older and as a insure tech founder in in a space back in 2016 and when we launched in 2018 not many females shannon right like in yeah in our space yeah so there's a handful there was a few more but you know when you pitch in the room there's always like you're the only one or you're one maybe there's two of us and we build this relationship and i think the why has shifted to how can we start to create more advocacy and show that this is why I like doing podcasts like these, right? Like, because to be honest with you, I think we have to get the word out that it is possible. I came from a very small town in Sparta, North Carolina, and was really like, took a lot of great risks, but also had good people and good mentors along the way. And, you know, these things can be achieved if you can really, you know, get the, get, get you out of the way. You have to get ourselves out of the way. And there is a great tribe of individuals that will support as you're doing this. Oh yeah. Support is so important. And, uh, you know, I wish I had learned that. And I, I talk about lessons. I wish I had learned so much earlier, you know, that you don't have to do it all by yourself and it's, you, it's impossible to do it all by yourself. Yeah. 
And even like for me, like I had a daughter, I started a company when she was six months old, mm -hmm. but if it wasn't for my mom and it wasn't, if it wasn't for my family support, even now, right? Like we had a board meeting, my dad came to the house because we, we have four dogs. <laughs> and, so, and that's, that's what, you know, we keep at, you know, we keep, this is a tribe, right? Like yeah. we're all in it together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Bobby, tell me, you've been working with data for most of your career now. I mean, even in starting in college. So what is your definition of data? To me, data is, is what I said earlier, right? Like insights, like you, it's, it's the new gold. It's what will carry this. It, it's what is going to allow us to be, uh, to really create you know, greater outcomes, not only for our organizations, but also for, for the society as a whole. Because if we can look at data, not in a transactional way, but how we can like really start to look at insights that can create impact, that's where I see us. Like this, this we're, we're, we've got so many tools now, but still people are drowning in data, thirsty for insights. How do we start to to peel that onion, right? How do we yeah. make data the gold, right? That it will the gold standard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So then, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next ten years, and why? I think it's going to increase because everything we touch has a meaning, right? Like, look at like what's happened in social media, right? Mm -hmm. You start talk. We start talking about data. I bet you go on TikTok. We'll start getting content about data. Oh yeah. Because I think that's that's it's it's all about personalization and mm -hmm. and 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 data is a way, right? Like who, what defines Bobby Shrivastava? There's hundreds of data points, right? That's that's if you think about it, we're all data. Right. We're all made out of data. Yeah. So I think the the more people can get educated the more people can get technical chops around making sense of data this is here to i mean this is here to stay like what is ai ai is it's you know like the the next wave of jobs are prompt engineering you're asking questions you're inputting data in a way to get answers that will make sense right so i mean it's just I think this is, it's, it's a fascinating field, but it's, you know, uh, do you have to get a degree in data analytics? No, mm -hmm. <laughs> but data is everywhere, but, you know, but having that aptitude, that curiosity is, is what's going to allow the future generation to be successful. Oh, I, I totally agree. So then what advice would you give to people looking to get into a career in data management, any aspect of it? Yeah, I would say don't shy away from it. We uh, and you don't have to be, you know, a newly graduate to get into this field. Um, there's lots of programs out in the market that are pro uh, promoting upskilling in in these fields, right? Like we have. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact at Benikiva we have an internship program that's not your typical internship program for young right? Like new college grads. It's for people that want second, like, like I'm a nurse. I can't do that profession anymore. I'm interested. I'm curious. I want to get into this field. So we create these pathways, right? I, my friend's company, we talked about this earlier, Sangha. She's hiring moms that are taking a break, but they still have want to like keep up and and do something, but they can't do it in a full-time way, get them into the workforce. So it's never like, it, don't put yourself in a box, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's for you. It's, it's, there's so much available right now. So if you do want to get into a career, you can't say, well, I lost my chance. No, there's always an opportunity. And for the young folks, oh, take it, like get a double major. If you, if you, it's, this is the future. Like there was a study, uh, uh, there was a statistic that a futurist talked about. And I, and I, and I think this it, before I was like, eh, now it's becoming a reality. Like 80% of our jobs in the next five years are going to have something related to technology. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I think about technology, I think about data as well, right? Yeah. Like I, I put that in a, in a similar concept. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you have that intern program. That is amazing. I know we have hired um, and uh, worked with a few women who took a break to uh, to have children and really struggled to get back into the workforce uh, because they took that break and and, yeah. and and nobody understood that, hey, they were project managing the whole time that they were being moms, you know? And it's, that's great. That's amazing. I love that you're that, that advice, uh, to try new things and, and interns, uh, internships are a great way to demonstrate that. I hope more companies model that. Um, Bobby, well, this has been amazing. So, okay. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask, you know, if somebody wanted to learn more about Benakiva and, uh, solicit services, how would they find you? So Benikiva has a great website, benikiva.com. We're very active on LinkedIn. We have a great company page. We have newsletters. So go to LinkedIn, type Benikiva, and then you will find me on LinkedIn. Like I'm pretty, I'm a big advocate of having a good social brand, uh, social media brand, and I use LinkedIn quite often. Awesome. Well, and we will get those uh, links posted to the podcast site as well for people to find. Well, Bobby, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you, Shannon, for having me. Oh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in podcasts and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.